All right, welcome back to Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. As we look at um, side hustles in the wake of the biting inflationary pressure in the country, my guest, Mark Ijahe, is an inspirational leadership coach, brand and communication strategist. His career vision is to be involved in assessing the need for acquiring and implementing revolutionary strategies and systems for top-notch performance in organizations through exceptional leadership approach. Idiahi is a social enterprise developer, a leadership mentor, and sought-after speaker on topics related but not limited to leadership, governance, growth, and collaborative development. He is the publisher of a foremost pan African magazine called African Future Leadership Magazine. Many thanks for joining me on Business Insights, Mark. Thank you so very much. Glad to be here. Yes, it is indeed uh, our pleasure. Let's talk about side hustles. You know, in the wake of um, the biting inflation that everyone can actually relate to, most people are looking at them having one or two other jobs, you know, attached, uh, you know, to their normal source of uh, livelihood. How do you really react to this new development because of uh, the way things are going on right now in the country? All right. Uh, once again, thank you for having me. Now, uh, first of all, we must admit that this is an unusual time and people are barely surviving. So I tend to live with just one source of income is a strategy for financial crisis. And I'm not going to be apologetic when I reference the first man here. I mean, if I go a bit spiritual, the first man God created, he put him in a place called Eden and he gave him four strings. Think about it. If God in his wisdom and his multifaceted dimension in nature will create a man and put him in a perfect, what I would love to call a perfect utopia, where everything was well garnished and bullish and everything working perfectly, and he thought that it was critical that that man had four streams of income. Why in the world would anybody in the right senses think that he can strive in an economy as complex as Nigerians Nigeria's economy with one streams of income. Now, the question I've often asked uh, people around that are nine to five, you call them night, uh, night to fivers. How in the world are you coping with this incessant increase in price of commodity, household items, when your salary is not increased correspondingly? I mean, you, you go to market today, for instance, and you see an item that has doubled in price. You were in the market two weeks ago. Now you're in the market, back to the market, and they tell you that the price has doubled. And uh, the way they can rationalize that is to tell you, hey, are you not in this country? Are you not following the trend with the currents and with the uh, fluctuation in exchange rates and all of that? So why should anyone? I understand in your intro you said something that we should not, in a bid to have side puzzle, then play down the significance of having the main hustle. Yes, yeah, there has to be that moderation. There has to be that balance. Your main hustle is good. You have to have that going. But you have to be strategic and very pragmatic by devising strategy to have other streams of income. Otherwise, you're going to choke in this economy. All right, still speaking of um, uh, streams of income, most people have actually uh, moved towards um, the line of entrepreneurship. Uh, they are using their skills or uh, most of the things they have passion for to monetize them to be actually getting something you know, in return from that. I know people who ordinarily love cooking and um, because of um, the way the economy or the economy is really biting, they have even started one sort of um, food business even online. But some people would tell you that uh, they don't really think uh, they have um, short skills or they have enough skills uh, that could um, be upskilled uh, to you know ch channeled into getting more money for them do you really have to be so talented to have um, um, a side hustle per se or maybe to be an entrepreneur on your own no no not exactly my brother what, what we need what they need is to think and think outside of the boss you know when a man is hungry enough he would devise a me. Hunger does two things to a man. Number one, hunger can incapacitate a man. And when that happens, he lost the ability to think. And when you can't think, you'll be stagnant, you'll be stranded. Then on the flip side, hunger can become a recipe for success because it drives you from a comfort 
a comfort zone. And comfort zone in the first place is an illusion. It's not real. Comfort zone, I liken it to a rocking chair, you know. The thing I hate about rocking chair is that you can be in one position, exerting energy, swinging back and front, and you never cover any distance. Right, Mark, are you still there with us? Can be enough. And you don't necessarily have to have this ingenious idea. In this in this time and age, you don't have to be so gifted with the ability to conceive grand idea for you to be able to be successful. There are clues here and there. For instance, for instance, I resigned from I'm not in any way trying to uh undermine people that do nine to five, but I resigned from that about seven years ago, because I wanted to be able to be in a place and make a whole lot of things happen online, leveraging on the own. There are many things that anyone can do in this age and time without having to move around. And, and by the way, if you're going to be successful financially, mind you, it's not going to be by hard work, so to speak, in this contest. It's not going to be by how much hustling you have done. I know we call it side hustle. But you can be in one spot and you leverage on online platform. I have a friend, a friend who is into graphics, for instance, and his clients are US-based clients and from United Kingdom, from different parts of the world. And I asked him a couple of days ago, why do you why don't you love to take clients from Nigeria? Why don't you prospect for Nigeria clients? And he says, sir, with all that is happening with the currency, I'm in a vantage position if I have clients that are US-based or Canadian and or in, in UK, for instance, because they get to pay me in, in their currency, and by the time I convert that, that's a whole lot of money. Just to reference the point, just to mm. put it in proper, proper perspective, I was reading one uh, commentary by an economist a uh, few, few hours ago, and he said that this devaluation of Naira is intentional by the government so as to in encourage exportation and discourage importation. Now... <laughs> I don't intend to laugh, but I need to. It's interesting. It's an interesting conundrum here because you are saying that for us to be able to encourage and get people to export things or merchandise and coal, there is need for the value to be devalued. That sounds good. Logically, economically, it sounds good. But the last time I checked, all the economists can't even seem to find their way out of this conundrum we find ourselves right now. Because their permutation, their projection, and their analysis and co, they are not working. This is my point. As long as that economy policy does not affect the life of the common man when it comes to hassle goods, then we are in trouble. Because what you have on the street, the restlessness, the crime rates, and this depression and all of this things happening is as a result of common man, as it were, not able to eke out a living, not able mm -hmm. to fend for themselves. So any smart governments or policy makers have to be determined in ensuring that whatever policies that they come up with has to positively affect the common man. But the positive side of that is truly with the way currency, with the currency Go with the way currency is going right now. Anybody who can be in a position to export would definitely be in a vantage position. So we are not just looking at the Nigeria economy, how you can survive within this spell, but how about you developing skill or going for information and knowledge, asking yourself, what can I do right now from where I am to put me in a financial, uh, in, a, in a positive position financially mm. to be able to be, I mean, to be able to strive. All right, fine. You know, some people would actually say that uh, they really don't have enough time, that uh, they work Monday to Friday, they work nine to five. But uh, how can you really manage the 24 hours that we have in a day and still try to, you know, get a side hustle? Or maybe put differently, how can you manage your first job and a second job without having either of them suffer? Awesome. Now, if I were to flip this camera, you realize that I'm actually walking from the house right now. We did night. Mm. Okay. You see, time is the most valuable resource we both have. Both the janitor and the CEO in the Photo 500 have one thing, one equilibrium. I love to call it uh, equilibrium. It's a unifier. Time. 
what you do and how you manage your time will determine where you'll be in the nearest, let's say five years from now, invariably. Hmm. All right, Mark, do we still have you there? It is really very, yeah, very... You, okay, go you ahead. You keep complaining that you don't have time. How many hours in the day are you sleeping? Mm. Because... All right, we seem to have a connection issue there. Oh, it's a Mark. Mark, can you hear us? Yeah, but just before we lost Mark there, we've been talking about how you can actually, you know, manage your time, be very efficient about it, because uh, some people might even expect uh, us to have like um, 36 hours uh, in the day just uh, to do all they need to do at the time. But uh, you have to be a very effective or efficient time manager if you really want to plan your finances, your resources, and of course all of the other side hustles or second jobs that uh, you might have in mind. Uh, do we still have um, Mark there? All right, Mark, go ahead. We lost you at some point. Yeah, continue, please. Okay, good. So, is, it, it all comes to this. How are you able to manage your time? For you to be successful, you have to be a good manager mm -hmm. of your time. We all have 24 hours in the day. Like I hinted earlier, I'm walking from the house right now. I don't have to get to the road, drive from one end of the street or from one place to, to the other, if I can do what I can do now. Look at what technology have afforded us. On a, on a way back, I will have to be in your office, in your studio right now, mm. for us to have this conversation. But you are on one end, and I'm on the other side, and we are having this conversation, and we are having the best of our time. Why? Because we are maximizing the moment and the opportunity that technology throws at us. So if you don't have time, you, if you are, if I was a nine to five, if I was a nine to five, mm. what I would is to set up time. When would I get to the house from work? See, all the many things, I don't watch TV. I don't have no business with TV and all the frivolous things that do. Anything that will not translate and have a positive impact in my bottom line and develop me and position me to be more efficient, I have no business with that. Mm. Most people that now what they devote a large chunk of their time to, aside the work, work is, your life is not all about the work. What do you do with the other extra time right. that you have? Okay. That is what is important.